What's up, everybody? Destroyer here. Welcome back to another cast of Lord of the Rings, the Battle from Little 2, The Rise of the Witch King, Patch 2.2, Version 6. Today we have a 1v1 on Forza Vizen 2. Let's see who we got today. We got uh, Bionicle as Isengard, who also goes by Caleb. That's his alternate name. And he plays under sometimes, or used to at least. And yeah, so he's Isengard, and his opponent for this match is Talion. Also goes by Samurai. Or Murat, whatever you, whatever you want to call him. He has quite a few names, to be honest. We call him Samurai, usually, but uh, he is Talion today, so that's his new name, and we'll be calling him Talion. So he's Man of the West. So we got Bionicle, Isengard, and Talion as Man of the West. Excellent. And it looks like Talion's going for Gondor soldiers. This is starting a unit, so he'll be sending those out. And we got a clan setting start here, so we'll be using some Wildmen. From Bionicle. He's continuing to get his farms underway, or furnaces rather, in that case. As is Talion, of course. As you would expect any player to. And then uh, we'll see what happens from there, I suppose. There they go. First Battalion of Wildman is underway. And we have the first Battalion Gunner Soldiers crossing the ford. They should arrive at the enemy base shortly. For the sake of uh, getting in there quicker. There we go. <laughs> well, cheeky fast forward. Never hurt nobody. Alright. They have finally reached the base. And of course, Bionicle doesn't really want to engage the Wildman because Wildman was slaughtered by buffed Condor soldiers, so he's opting to uh, try and maneuver around. At least try and block him a little bit. As he knew he was going to go for this side of the farm. Attacking here was not really wise. But he did maneuver over here, and it looks like his soldiers have been thrown into shield wall formation. In aggressive stance, though. Interesting enough. He didn't manage to even take the furnace down to one half of the uh, health bar there, so that's unfortunate for Talion. And the Wildman did manage to get a level 2 off that as well. Butchering them as they did. Kree Run definitely helped as well. For sure. I don't know if there's any benefit. Like, it. aggressive stance makes it so you decrease your armor, but whole ground, or a shield wall increases your armor, so I'm not quite sure how that works, if you put them together. Are you just in standard formation again? Probably not. Because I don't know the, I don't know the actual statistics of it, but whatever. Anyway, looks like Italian has indeed taken the furnace. At the cost of that battalion of Gundar soldiers, though. It looks like we got our first battalion going to try and harass Ooh, these guys are flying. Intellion's realm. Wildmen are great for harassment. Of course, if you give them the torch upgrades, they're like way better. They destroy buildings really quick. But they are pretty good against buildings without it. And because of the positioning of the Gundor soldiers for Italian, it looks like Bionicle should be able to take that with ease without getting slaughtered beforehand. Meanwhile, Italian is still trying to do some damage in the base here, but he is having to fight off hordes of Wildmen. I think when fighting against uh, Wildmen, definitely want to go shield wall and then hold ground stance. Just get that huge armor bonus. Because Wildmen don't get that armor bonus. They go and hold ground stance too, but their armor is far inferior to the Gunner Soldier, of course. This Gunner Soldier actually got level 2. Although we do have Uruk crossbows out for Bionicle, and that should swing things in favor of Isengard there. As they will burst them down. And yeah, it looks like Bionicle is also creeping the warg there here. So we can get a nice little amount of gold from that and such. Meanwhile, over here he is attacking. We do have some Gondor archers out for Samurai. Or Italian, rather. Yeah, stick to one name. And he's also got another battalion here. He's get some more Gondor soldiers out of the barracks. Continue to expand his farms, replace the ones that were lost. Something you have to remember to do. If you don't replace the farms you lose, then you're just going to be uh, falling behind there. But I definitely say Bionicle's army is starting to grow in power. He's got a nice variety as well. You could also transition into using Wild Manaxors if he just upgrades this for 200, which is pretty cheap. The building itself is pretty expensive. 600 clan setting, I believe. But uh, 200 to upgrade is nothing. And you can start spamming out Wild Manaxors for 250, which is pretty nice. 
But of course, crossbows do in a pinch, and they are quite effective at bringing down these Gondorian soldiers. So that's pretty good for him. Although the Middle West Army is getting sizable as well. He's got a lot of Gondor soldiers. He's got some Gondor archers as well coming across the ford. More on the way. No heroes as of yet. No heroes for Isengard either, of course. But as you might expect, I would expect alerts out from Bionicle if there's going to be any heroes at all. And at that point, you have to be very careful as the Men of the West player as to getting a hero because of the Purple Strike Carnage combo. It can be very deadly. I do think Isengard will win this engagement, though. He's got a lot of crossbows, and these guys are tanking quite well, especially with this Creebine debuffing the crap out of the archers here. Creebine is incredibly useful. Just make sure you keep it on the enemy when you're using it. Also, you can use the scout if he so desires, which is useful. We've got farms still going. we got more soldiers on the way. Looks like the Titan Wildmen are being slaughtered over here. Very good. Very good indeed. And uh, now Bionicle is pushing across to do some damage. It looks like he's also fending off a battalion of Gondor soldiers over here. Or at least tempting to. Let's get more pikes, more wildmen. The sheer amount of crossbows that he has on the field is definitely going to make it difficult. It looks like we have a Faramir out for Talion. Good choice. Especially since there's a lot of archers. Faramir's a good counter archer. So he's also a good choice against teams like elves and such. Or what have you. But uh, if he responds with alerts, that's going to be quite problematic. But with this sheer amount of crossbows, I think some cav would be good, maybe? If I was the Man of the West player, myself? Faramir will help, but I don't think he's going to kill that many crossbows. <laughs> Not before they kill everything else. It's so definitely need some cav. But he's oddly not throwing on a stable, so... He's going to try to overpower the Isengard force, which I don't... I don't think he's going to do with the size of force he has here. He does have your hero, though. Which will help. So Fairmere has reached level 3 now. Very nice. Faramir is definitely great, though, because he's insta-killing each shot, one crossbow, and then eventually he'll whittle down the crossbow forces to do nothing. While well, your troops absorb lots of damage. Oh, interesting, we got war riders are going to come out for Bionicle. I can see that being a great choice, in fact, because, uh, of course, Talion is not going any pikemen whatsoever, and it... He clearly does not know this exists because he hasn't been that far scouted. So he might be feeling the pain of the Warg Rider soon enough. Warg Riders aren't great in 2.2 version 6, but they will do in a pinch. They're not the worst thing that's ever happened to the game. <laughs> so uh, they'll still work as calves and they'll still do as intended. Especially against this basic army here. I think Faramir one shots across. Well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe not when they're buffed. Let's find out. Oh yeah, he's definitely one shot one. Faramir was definitely a good call. I think Caleb or uh, Bionicle should really go for uh, Lurks though. Lurks would cripple this guy and beat him to death in a seconds. So I think that would be a good call. But of course, the wire, the war goes thing might work out in his favor as well. So I guess we'll find out. So we're going to engage in the forward again, in the middle forward. What's the Italians doing a good job otherwise without Cav? Fairman needs to be a little bit careful. He had to run through some pikes there. Oh no, he's not going to be able to outrun the Warg Riders though. Or even the Urukai. Down he goes. And the Warg Riders even get a bonus trample in on some archers. Obliterating the battalion almost. There's two actually battalions, just the banner carrier remains. So that neutralizes any archer threat that he has going. Now Bionicle has clearly taken advantage of this game. He's taking control. 
just from one battalion of war graders swung the game in his favor quite severely I'd say so that's highly unfortunate and like I said I think Cav should have happened <laughs> When you see an enemy going heavily on the wildman side, heavily on the crossbows, you're gonna need some cav. Whether you want to or not, really. And I think his his lack of building cav is costing him the game right now. And of course, Bionicle is reaping the benefits of having a fast mobile attack unit that tramples archers. And great for harassing farms, of course, as well. As they are known to do. Looks like we do have a hobbit summon for here for Talion, but not doing a whole lot with them. We do have a timer, you might as well use them. <laughs> it's not like they give the enemy power points. Send them to their deaths. And yeah, Bionoko has gone for oh, summon Wildman. Or chant Creebon six power points. He's sitting at uh, 361, 425. Talion. Hobbit allies rally call two power points, 344, 525. So, Italian does have more farms. He's actually doing better on the economy front. But, I would definitely not say he's doing better overall, if I'm quite honest. But he's doing alright. He's not dead by any means, just because one battalion of is on the field. Doesn't mean he's gonna lose the game, although he is losing him so many units. <laughs> So many archers have died to this one battalion of wards. Same with swordsmen. Wargraders, they're usually dead very quickly. But not these. I mean, that could be due to poor, poor micro and lag, of course, but <laughs> who knows. I'd definitely say they're helping out. And we have alerts out for Bionicle now. So once he levels up, if any... Uh, Pesky Man the West Heroes come out. He's going to neutralize them pretty nicely. So I'd say... Uh, it's looking pretty bleak for Bi uh, for Italian. Definitely. Well, now he's going to have to fend off some farm harassment in his base as well. And he's trying to push, but just... Crossbows. And alerts bursting down the enemy. Well, the Uruks tank all the damage. Working quite nice. So he's devastation there as well. Giving him a nice amount of coin. He's almost got enough for Saruman. Wouldn't that be interesting? I don't think it's necessary, but if you got a Saruman, it'd be pretty huge because uh, I don't think Talion has any way to deal with the Saruman at all. He's already struggling without the Saruman. And I think actually once. Bionicle starts attacking, doing real damage. He's not going to really be able to do much. Oh, the alerts carnage in front of the barracks. That's something you got to be careful of. He trapped the troops from coming out, and then he used Lurtz's cleave AOE attack to hit them all while they're coming out. Pretty much killing them instantly. So that's pretty brutal. But yeah, I think this game's a... Uh, I think this game's pretty much won here. <laughs> Odd, but the game's completely decided by one lack of one unit. I think it would have been a whole different ball game. It's not over yet, of course, but I th one Gondor Knight would have done so much damage if my run properly, of course. So it's kind of baffling that he chose not to go any cav. And try to just overwhelm a very strong Rook army with Gondor archers and swords. <laughs> well. Maybe we got Worm Tongue. Interesting. I say interesting lightly, of course. It's not that interesting, but you know. He can be. Venom's words are pretty good. It's a nice little debuff you have to throw on your enemies. But uh, he needs to be careful for the Yule Worm Tongue. Guess he's gonna die there. Oh, down he goes. That was a waste of money. <laughs> it's gotta be said, he's not the best in the, uh, the old melee front, old worm tongue. Well, the Wolgarage took some damage, but they did some damage in return. So, they did their duty there. 
We still got Wildmans, we still got Crossbows, we still got Alerts here, which is level 4. He can Cripple Strike, and it looks like he's going to do so. That's exactly what I was talking about. Now Faramir's stuck. All the Faramir is trying to burst down Alerts. With the Archer support. Ooh, the Wounding Arrow almost finishing him. Will he be able to finish Alerts before he finishes him? Yes, he will. But it looks like this single Swordsman taking the glory for himself. And by swordsman, of course, mean Baron Carrier of the Pike Moon Medallion, but close enough. So it's a hero for hero trade off there. Nasty little engagement. Oh, we got summon row here. I'm coming out for Italian. That should help. Well, if you can't manage to build your own cav, you might as well summon some for yourself, right? <laughs> I guess that works. That will definitely help out, though. Of course, Cav will help deal with harassment from these pesky little wildman hordes. Although they're much better at trampling. I don't know why he's not trampling. He's probably microwing elsewhere. We got ward packs here out for a Bionicle. He's also wearing ward riders ward pack now. Ward packs are pretty good for harassment as well because they have the hell ability and they're quick. And hell, of course, gives 50% damage, 50% armor, which is pretty. It's a war chant, basically. A free war chant. Just like Ward Riders have, just without the Rider. They're pretty good for harassment. Look at these little Kai fighting off some glorious looking Rohirrim. Some in Rohirrim do come with armor upgrades. That's why they have the golden armor look. You know, Forge Blades, though. That's why they last so long, because they have armor upgrades, I'm assuming. I mean, it could be a cosmetic thing, but. Of the summon, but I'm pretty sure they probably do because they seem pretty tanky. So I'm gonna go off that assumption. Oh, those Gondor soldiers didn't stand a chance with the Warg Riders out. All hope is lost. Italian could bring this back. He just needs. Well, he needs what I've been saying he needs the whole game. Cav. <laughs> I know. It's very unusual for a Man of the West player to just not build a cab unit at all. Especially when you need them. I guess the archers can deal with those nicely, but... Look at it. There's not even a pike here. Imagine. Just imagine the possibilities. But alas, he's going to have to try and overpower them with Rohan peasants. A sad day indeed. Urukai are fairly strong, tanky units to begin with, so it'll take a bit for them to die. Which will give the crossbows time to looks like, shoot down some uh, Gondor archers. But the pikemen are getting some swings in there. And they are dying. There we go, we have a bit of scuffle in the middle here. Wildman something going down on Talion's army. Lurch is back out for a bionicle. He's also brought in the war riders. And looks like the hobbits have been summoned in. Italian. Frodo and his glowy ass sword. You always know where Frodo is. When orcs are close. Even though if his sword glows, even though there's no orcs in the battle, it's just cosmetic. Hobbit summons do net you money, though, if you kill them. If you have scavenger, if you have lurks around or something. As you saw, Frodo netted him 100 resources. That's pretty nice. But it looks like Talion's army has been decimated. And now the base is to follow. So I think this is GG here. For sure this time. It's going to take a bit of a miracle. What he has coming is not going to be near enough to stop this. Plus these are summoned wildmen as well, so he's not going to be really losing too much. Oh, Lurch getting sniped by Faramir. It's got to be said though, Faramir has been doing work. Usually Lurch would be countering Faramir pretty nice, but... Faramir has actually been sniping the hell out of him with the Wounding Arrow. Wounding Arrow does a lot of damage to heroes. That's a very good ability. So I wouldn't say Faramir was a bad choice by any means in this game. I just think if he had the addition of some Cav, he probably would have won the game. With that uh, Faramir Cav basic troops combo there he's got going. Would be pretty good. I'm honestly surprised Eisengrove on Cav, to be honest. 
Most Isengard players don't. Because no one likes war graders. But they do they do what they're supposed to do, for the most part, if you use them properly, of course. There's the Watcher Summon from Bionicle. If any archers come out of there, they're just gonna get whipped immediately. Which is going to be happening very shortly. Oh, they're all dead. And they're going to die as well. Yikes. <laughs> Painful. That does, of course, give Bionicle time to regroup his armies. He should really give his Wildman torch upgrade so he can just take on the buildings a lot quicker. I would if I was him. He's probably in a position where he can do so pretty easily. I mean, he's Isengard. He's got full map control. And he's thrown down devastation every now and then. Gone for Worm Tongue again, of all things. Interesting to go for a Worm Tongue at the end of the game. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but why not, right? Farmer's over here sniping dudes while his base gets ravaged. There you go. He's going for the torch upgrades. And with that, that's going to speed up the process substantially. As well, when the torches ruin buildings. Especially when they're buffed. These aren't buffed even. There you go. You can see firsthand on the farm tons of damage. Alright, there you go. Italian is going to die, but not before bringing wood and oil, it seems. Is he going to use the boiling oil? Oh! I nickel saw it coming! All these guys went back. Oh, they actually didn't go back too soon. Very nice split up there. He saw it coming. Oh, he's going to try it again. It comes back very quickly. It's like he wasn't ready for round two of it. <laughs> I mean, look at the, the reduction, or the power cooldowns that we're looking for. Oh, Jesus. Worm Tongue should really go invisible. Or not. <laughs> His micro with Worm Tongue has been pretty subpar at best. Worm Tongue has an ability to not die, for God's sakes. It's a flirt's on the hunt. Paramir doesn't want to die like this. Not like a peasant. Will that do any damage alerts? Not really. <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll watch one last brutal beating of Faramir. Oh. No. Alright, well this game's over. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can uh, sit to say it. Let's just fast forward until it's over. Because obviously nothing is happening. Except for Bionicle leaving him a life support <laughs> for some fucking reason. So obviously nothing, nothing good is going to come of this, so I'm just going to end it. I hate when games end like this. What? What's the point of wasting your time getting full upgraded armor? Well, looks like it didn't get hit by that. In come more. Down goes arrow volley. Oh, I don't got a lot of kills. Not nearly enough though. This fortress is toast. No, never mind. Rebuild is hit. The fortress. You can definitely tell I have my shaders down. Look at the textures of the Metalist Fortress. It's so noticeable in the Metalist Fort. It looks all smooth without all the detail. And I, of course, do that to turn off the fog of the map. It's a, it's a price we have to pay. I'm afraid. But I don't. I don't even know what's happening right now. <laughs> right, so Binnacle has lost this game. Or, <laughs> I mean, he might as well have lost this game with the amount of time he's taking to kill his enemy. He's letting him get back into the game, but I'm not. This game was decided, and I've decided it's over. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna fast forward to the end. We're gonna watch it all speed through. Look how much longer this dragon on for. The literal shit. <laughs> Jesus. Good thing I didn't decide to watch it. Alright, well there you go. That has been a, a match. Definitely Italian needed Cav. Desperately. But he did not. He, uh, he got overwhelmed. Unfortunate. 
And I think the cav use of Bionicle was pretty good. Definitely nailed home for him. So that was pretty nice. But yeah, there you go. That has been a, uh, a cast of the Rise of Witch King patch 2.2. And hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.